Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. You're listening once again to the Hour of the Time. I'm William Cooper. Uh, right off the bat, I, I want uh, all of you listening uh, anywhere near Dandridge, Tennessee. we got a little emergency there, and I need, uh, I need anybody living near Dandridge, Tennessee to call me after, listen to me very carefully, after, not during the broadcast. I cannot discuss it on the broadcast, so don't call in and say, I'm from Dandridge, what can I do? I need to talk to you privately on the phone after the broadcast. Okay, anybody who lives near, reasonably near, Dandridge, Tennessee, I need you to call me personally at this uh, same number uh, that we're going to open the phones with later. You know, it's our call-in line. After the broadcast. That's after the broadcast. Please, don't call during the broadcast because I'm going to have to be rude and hang up on you. I cannot discuss it over the air. But we have a little emergency and I'm, I'm, I, need some, uh, I need somebody who's willing to give us a little help. That's Dandridge, Tennessee. Okay? Uh, <clears throat> boy. Uh, let me uh, tell you right now that uh, you're lucky to be hearing me live tonight because uh, last Friday I get calls from several different people who are on their way here. And all this week we're going to be meeting and uh, uh, making some decisions and some plans. And uh, I will not be live on the air again after tonight until July the 3rd. Uh, you'll be hearing reruns on WBCQ, uh, you know, tomorrow night through uh, July the 2nd. Uh, and then I will be back live July the 3rd. For those of you listening in the Round Valley, there will be no broadcast of the hour of the time in the Round Valley again after tonight until July the 3rd. I'm going to be busy with uh, a lot of people coming to visit. Uh, we're going to be talking over some very important things, making some decisions, and uh, making some plans. And uh, ultimately, uh, you, you know, you're you're going to be you're going to know about these things, but probably won't be for a while. Um, these are very important people in the Patriot community, and uh, these are very important meetings. And as far as I'm concerned, uh, these are the cream of the crop of uh, of the people in America who are willing to uh, to fight and die for their country if need be. And uh, um, they are, in my estimation, uh, the modern founding fathers. If there if there were, if there ever could be, a parallel to the Founding Fathers, these are some of those people. Not all of them, but some of them. And so that's what I'm going to be very uh, busy with um, for the rest of, of this week through the weekend and Monday. And uh, they should all be gone Monday evening or, or Tuesday morning, and then I will be back live on Tuesday evening. And um, for all of you out there... <laughs> who are listening, who, uh, you know, we're not plotting anything. We are American patriots who believe in the Constitution. We believe in the law. And uh, we believe, as I have repeated over and over again on this broadcast, whoever fires the first shot loses. The feds have done it several times, uh, and they're in the process of losing because of it. Uh, you don't have to worry about anything that we're going to do. But I will tell you this. If and when civil war breaks out in this country, you will find us the most formidable force that you can imagine, uh, and we will go after the enemies of this republic uh, without fail. We will uh, pursue them aggressively, and uh, we, we will fight and take down any foe uh, that we come into contact with. As you all know, I am the intelligence director for the Continental Army of the, the second, second, excuse me, uh, I don't want to impinge upon the uh, the, uh, the the proper um, credit due to those who were members of the Continental Army of the Republic. We are the Second Continental Army of the Republic. It is made up mostly of active duty, um, honorably discharged, and retired uh, enlisted men and officers who have served in the armed forces of the United States of America. Uh, so that should give you some idea of what we might be capable of. We are, are not planning, nor do we, uh, or will we ever 
take part in any revolution. When you hear the word revolution, the word masses, uh, uh, the word, you know, lots of these little code words, those are communists speaking. Uh, and believe me, you don't want to take part in a revolution in this country. You want to take part in a restoration, which is exactly what we intend to do. We will restore a constitutional Republican government in this country. Uh, we will do it with the moral high ground. We will never fire the first shot. But when the first shot is fired, I guarantee you, there will never be another Waco. Uh, these things are not going to occur in this country again. Uh, but the powers that be, uh, that, that plot these things, that plan them and carry them out, uh, they can't resist it. And so eventually they will fire the shot that will be, you know, once again, like at Lexington and Concord, heard round the world. And when that happens, uh, we will take them to task in earnest. And believe me, we will take them down and we will restore constitutional Republican government in this country. And lest you misunderstand what I'm saying, I don't care what you believe in or who the hell you think you are. Listen to me very carefully. Patriots are everywhere and they outnumber the scum-sucking socialist uh, communists in this country. Uh, not only that, but we have guns and they don't because they don't believe in it. Uh, we're willing to die for what we believe in and they're not. We will win. Uh, simply because of these these things, uh, if if nothing else, and uh, uh, there are patriots everywhere. If you think you're safe, revealing that you're an enemy of this republic, you better think twice because your secretary might be a patriot. The person you're talking to might be a patriot, pretending to be a socialist. If you're a police chief or a member of some law enforcement agency or agency of federal government who is a socialist. Uh, planning to bring about this uh, world government over the ashes of the United States of America. Let me assure you, and uh, make no mistake about it, uh, you will be identified and uh, uh, you are in earshot and uh, the, the capability of patriots to identify exactly who you are. And Madame Defarge, ladies and gentlemen, is knitting furiously. And if you don't know who she is, read Tale of Two Cities. That will uh, be a great eye-opener for you. Patriots are everywhere. Literally. of the Oklahoma City bombing, we were bombarded with anti-patriot, anti-militia, anti-
constitutionalists, that's people who believe in the Constitution for the United States of America, anti-American propaganda. And then when the execution of Timothy McVeigh occurred, once again, prior to and uh, immediately following, the same thing occurred again. And this word extremist was used over and 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 over again. And now we're being bombarded with messages that Osama bin Laden is planning to attack the United States of America and Israel. And I'm telling you, be prepared for a major attack. But it won't be Osama bin Laden. It will be those behind the New World Order who once again want to take the guns and the freedom away from the American people because we're the only ones left in the world who can oppose the destruction of freedom in the world and the implementation of a one-world totalitarian socialist government, and that is the goal. Now, how stupid can you be to believe that Timothy McVeigh was the mastermind of the destruction of the Alfred P. Mura Federal Building in Oklahoma City, and just he and Terry Nichols, who appears to be somewhat of a fool, plotted, planned, obtained all the different materials, put together a bomb of such force that it brought down what we call in the military a hard target, a target held up by steel, reinforced, concrete, columns, and he had no help. No help. And that there really was no person called John Doe number two that that was all a mistake and the drawings and the pictures they put out were, were not, uh, were not real people and they're, you know, that was all a mistake. Well, I know that's a lie because, uh, Michael Brescia, who is John Doe number two, the spitting image of the drawings that they put out, wearing the exact same cap that was worn by the man in the drawings that they put out, with the same tattoo on his left arm, stood in front of me for ten minutes and talked to me in the company of Timothy McVeigh. And Tim McVeigh was not the leader. Tim McVeigh probably didn't say more than 25 or 30 words during the entire time. Michael Brescia did all of the talking. And the last thing he said before they left in their green Mercury Marquis station wagon with a puke yellow interior, was watch Oklahoma City. If anyone was in charge, at least on that day, it was Michael Brescia, John Doe number two, not ever Timothy McVeigh. They told us during that conversation that they were setting out on a mission to make things better in this country and that they had the approval of the United States Army who had implanted them with computer chips, had given them their blessings and knew exactly where they were and what they were doing all the time. Michael Brescia showed me a place behind his left shoulder and said there was a computer chip that had been implanted under his skin by the United States Army. I felt it. There was something under his skin. Without a doubt, it was hard. It felt like it was square. It wasn't very big. But I do not personally know what it was. Timothy McVeigh said he had one implanted in his buttock and wanted me to confirm that it was actually there. I declined for obvious reasons. I wish today that I had not been so... Squeamish. I wish that I had personally checked his buttock to make sure that there was indeed something implanted where he said that it was. But I did not. So I cannot vouch that there was anything in Timothy McVeigh's buttock, but there definitely was something behind Michael Brescia's left shoulder. Now, lest you think that I'm making all of this up, 
There were a total of eight people, including me, not counting Timothy McVeigh and Michael Brescia in the research center when Tim Lesperance brought them in to introduce them to us. Tim Lesperance is one of those people. His son Peter was there. His wife Katie runs Katie's Country Kitchen. Used to be in St. John's. I believe it's now in Snowflake, Arizona. Granny Ghostling was there. She was in her 80s. I don't know if she's still alive or not. I pray and hope that she is. But then she was in poor health. So she may have died since then. Bart Chow. Michael Aponte. His wife Sharon. Were all there. They were working on the newspaper, Veritas. They took part in the conversation. They listened. We all gathered round. There were two other visitors to the research center that day. One, I believe I can find his identity in our database because he was a member of our intelligence organization and had donated some tables and file cabinets. The other, I don't remember who he was or uh, where he came from or anything. He was just there. Maybe somebody else does. So I was not the only witness there. So, FBI Director Free, you are a damn bold-faced liar when you claim that there is no John Doe number two and that you claim that you do not know who he is. He's a federal informant. And that's why, shortly after they issued the drawings identifying John Doe number two, the FBI supervisors told all their agents to stop looking for him and to forget about him. He did not exist. Because all of a sudden, they realized that John Doe number two was one of their very own informants. And that he was already in protective custody. Louis Free, you are a bold-faced liar. The FBI is a subversive organization, has been for many, many years. They are a partner in taking down this country. Timothy McVeigh did not plan, nor did he put together, nor did he blow up the Alfred P. Muir Federal Building, although he was an, a, witting, a witting fool recruited by someone on the grounds of patriotism. I'm sure he was told that he was going to help squash internal dissidents and terrorism in this country. I'm also sure that he didn't believe that the bomb was really going to go off. I'm sure, I'm certain, just as sure as the, the day I'm standing here, that he probably believed that if it did go off, it would go off before anyone reported to work, or he believed that it would never go off at all. Why would he take credit for it? when he's on death row and he knows he's going to be executed? Hell. <laughs> Why not at that point? But I don't think he did it for that reason. I think he played his role right to the very end. And I think the reporter that reported what she saw and the other reporters who said they never could tell if Timothy Bay actually died or not, there was never a point where they could tell that he was dead. And she said that even after, listen to me, even after he was pronounced dead, he was still breathing. He was still breathing. Dead men don't breathe. No coroner, no doctor, nobody in the world can explain that. Nobody. Now we know that she is changing her testimony because somebody got to her and she's scared. And you can hear it in her voice. I spoke to her personally. And as soon as I brought up the subject, you could hear her voice changed and there was fear, deadly fear in her voice. And she never denied what she had originally said. But she told me that she had probably misinterpreted what she saw. <laughs> Typical. 
of the history of these people. She knows if she sticks to what she told in the beginning is the truth, she will surely die. If you listen to the testimony of all the other witnesses, they said the same thing. There was no point where they could ever tell that Timothy Bay was dead. Well, if I was standing there watching, I would know when he was dead, he would be dead when he quit breathing. That's what I would watch for. That's what any sane, intelligent person would watch for. But no one who watched Timothy McVeigh's execution could tell us that he ever stopped breathing. Nobody. Nor could anyone tell us that they actually saw a point where they knew that he was dead. Until they were told by the medical examiner who pronounced him dead that he was dead. And then they believed it only because he told them, not because they had any proof that it was true. There was no autopsy. The body went straight from the prison, or so they tell us, to a morgue where it was instantly cremated. How could they do that in a state that requires all homicides to be Autopsy. What is a homicide? Any death brought about by the hand of man, including executions. Whoa! How about that? Did you know that the state wherein he was executed requires all homicides to undergo an autopsy? Yet that did not happen in that state. Why? Because the feds claimed jurisdiction and it was not a state execution. <clears throat> now, get this, folks. The feds have no jurisdiction over anything that happened in Oklahoma City on April the 19th, 1995. Period. The ground that the federal courthouse sits upon, or the federal building, I should say, was never deeded and ceded by the legislature of the state of Oklahoma to the federal government. Therefore, the federal government had no jurisdiction whatsoever over that crime. The Constitution states, unequivocally, that a criminal shall be tried in the state wherein the crime occurred. Yet he was tried in Colorado. Where was he executed? He wasn't executed in Oklahoma or Colorado. <laughs> How about that? No autopsy. Instant cremation. Sound familiar? Complete devastation of all of the evidence of the Alfred P. Muir Federal Building. No independent, no outside, no civilian, no state investigation was allowed of the bombing site whatsoever. The building was raised, blown up. I guess how they had to blow it up to bring it down. They had to put shaped charges on the remaining pillars to bring that building down. Heck. Why didn't they do just like Tim McVeigh did and pull up with a, you know, rider in a truck and uh, with uh, 4,000 pounds of, of, uh, of bullshit in it and uh, light a match? <laughs> Why indeed? Why didn't they just stack up some fertilizer inside and blow those up? Because you can't blow up a hard target with a cratering charge, which is what fertilizer is. Ammonium nitrate. And so, the feds never looked for John Doe number 2. In fact, they ordered their agents not to look for him and sent out instructions to all police departments and agencies that there was no John Doe number 2, that Timothy McVeigh and uh, Terry Nichols were the only participants in the bombing and not to look for anybody else. How about that? They're doing the same thing today with Osama bin Laden, and that's where I've been getting at. 
Can you believe what you have been seeing on CNN today, ladies and gentlemen? Can you believe it? <laughs> Supposedly, a CNN reporter found Osama bin Laden took a television camera crew with him, went into Osama bin Laden's hideout, interviewed him and his top leadership, his top lieutenants and colonels and generals in their hideout. This is a CNN reporter with a camera crew. And he came out and told everybody, within three weeks, Osama bin Laden is going to attack the United States and Israel. Now, don't you think that's kind of strange, folks? You see, because the largest intelligence apparatus in the world, with the biggest budget in the history of the world, has been looking for Osama bin Laden for years and years and years, and can't find him. The FBI also, under the leadership of Louis Free, has been looking for Osama bin Laden for years and years and years and years and years and many years, and can't find him. Some doofus, jerk-off reporter with a camera crew bosses right into his hideout and interviews him. And you know what his budget is? <laughs> Zip, zilch, nothing. Now, that tells us two things. Either everyone in the intelligence community and all of the intelligence agencies of the United States government are blithering idiots and incompetent fools, including the entire apparatus of the FBI and all of their personnel, or they're lying to us. They're not looking for him at all. And the second is the truth. You see, the CIA created Osama bin Laden. They recruited him. They trained him. They found his leadership. They brought them all together. They showed him them how to fight the Soviet Union in Afghanistan. And when that was over... They still continue to fund him and train him, and they're now using him to help bring about world government by making him the big boogeyman because they can't use Saddam Hussein anymore. Did you ever hear of Osama bin Laden before you heard of Saddam Hussein? When did you start hearing of Osama bin Laden? It was after Saddam Hussein and Iraq were supposedly neutralized in the Gulf War. Because they needed a new boogeyman. But they're not looking for Osama bin Laden because I'm telling you right now, if I were the head of the Central Intelligence Agency, within two weeks I would have him dead or in custody without fail. Without fail. If I had those assets and that money, he would be mine. I would own his terrorist ass within two weeks without fail. A reporter from CNN and his little camera crew got in to Osama bin Laden's secret hideout. And conducted an interview. If you don't believe me, tune in to CNN. They're probably running it right now as I'm speaking. And if you believe it, you are one of the stupidest jerks that ever lived on the face of this earth. And whatever is going to happen that they're going to blame on Osama bin Laden, don't you even believe it. Another social illusion, social engineering project to change the minds and the attitudes and the beliefs of the people 
of the world, and especially the United States, to bring about one world socialist totalitarian government. Can you believe what they were saying for a while? That Timothy McVeigh, the CIA, the NSA, the FBI, the Defense Intelligence Agency could not find Osama bin Laden in their wildest dreams. But Timothy McVeigh and Terry Nichols could and recruit him to be their partner in blowing up the Alfred P. Muir Federal Building. Bullshit! How stupid can you be? These guys didn't have a nickel between them. Not a nickel between them. How dumb can you, how stupid can you be? Put me in charge of the CIA. I guarantee you I will have him in custody in two weeks flat. Or dead. Take your pick. Take your pick. Give me that budget, those resources, those personnel. I guarantee you, he will be mine in two weeks. And you know what? If I had a few loyal, good Americans who were willing to donate enough money, certainly not even a drop in the bucket compared to what they really have in these intelligence agencies to really go after him, I could still have him in two weeks. Piece of cake. So why, why do all these fools believe this charade? That a CNN reporter and his little camera crew could do with all the money and all the assets and all the eavesdropping and all the intelligence and all the satellites and all the undercover operatives in the world Can never do. It's because they're not trying. They don't want to. Osama bin Laden is their creation. And he is serving them well. When in hell. Are all you people going to wake up? Are you kidding me? I mean, is this some kind of incredible joke that people are so stupid they fall for this? Do you know how much money the CIA and the National Security Agency and the FBI has at its disposal each year? Do you know how many agents they have that they can devote to this? Do you realize the technology that they have to be able to eavesdrop on every single conversation in the world? No matter how it's transmitted. And pinpoint the location of every one of those transmissions. And they can't find Osama bin Laden. But some CNN reporter, he just waltzes right on in there with his camera crew. Just like he knew where they were all the time. Bet you it was the CIA that sent him there. <laughs> I told him where he was. And, of course, they know where he is because they created him. They're the ones that are funding him and backing him and helping him to create their new utopian world. Hitler could not have ever come to power, absolute power in Germany, without the Reichstag fire. Hitler was a socialist. He understood social illusion. He understood social engineering. He knew how to get the support of the German people, and he did it by burning down the Reichstag. The Reichstag was, well, in our country, it would be the Capitol building that contains the Senate and the House of Representatives. So if somebody were to go and burn down the Capitol building today, they would use that as an excuse, as Hitler did, 
to round up all of the enemies of the New World Order, which would be me and most of you listening, and throw us into prison or execute us, declare martial law, and come to absolute and total power in this country. I wonder what Osama bin Laden's targets are supposed to be. And if they don't, you know, if this doesn't materialize in the next two or three weeks, it will eventually materialize because they haven't succeeded in getting the guns out of the hands of the American people, nor have they succeeded in taking our freedoms away. In fact, there's been a great awakening in this country and a, and a big backlash against these Marxist, communist, puke-faced, lying, subversive, Nazi, jack-booted, Gestapo thugs that is gaining momentum. And so I can tell you with a certainty, they must do something terrible in order to stop this backlash and regain the sympathy of the mass herds of sheeple out there. And I'm telling you, one of the things that will give us the moral high grain, ground and, uh, and will begin civil war is the day that they begin declaring martial law across this country taking guns out of the hands of the American people and rounding up American patriots. The war will start on that day. On that day. And there will be a war in this country, a civil war to restore, not a revolution, but a civil war to restore constitutional Republican government. Now, at the same time that that's going on, communist and Marxist underground forces will begin, or try to begin, a revolution in order to institute a Marxist, socialist, or communist government as a result of the Civil War. So we, patriots, will be fighting on two fronts. On two fronts. And you'd better understand which side you're going to be on. Restoration, revolution, our tyranny. I'll be fighting with the forces of restoration, and so should you better be. <laughs> and supposedly, we're not the only nation searching for Osama bin Laden. So, the vast economic resources, the vast technological resources, the vast personnel resources, the vast networks and intricate web spun over all these years by the CIA, the FBI, and the NSA. Can't find Osama bin Laden, but CNN can? Bullshit. Timothy Vay and Terry Nichols could... Bullshit. So many people in this country have their heads so far up their ass, I doubt very seriously if they will manage to extricate it before they suffocate. What a shame. What a crying shame. How in the world could this country of all nations breed such a dumbed down, unthinking, illiterate, uneducated, stupid, ignorant population? Anybody got a clue? We're going to open the phones. 520-333-4578 is the number. Be right back.
not the topic tonight. 520-333-4578 is the number. I don't give a damn what goes on in the right perspective or what, uh, you know, I don't care. 520-333-4578 is the number. And uh, you know what the topic is. You just heard it. You got something to say about it? Call 520-333-4578. How could you listen to all of that? And they want to talk about some... Uh, some uh, some lying, puke-faced, scum-sucking creep uh, says on the right perspective. Good evening. You're on the air. Hello? Hello. Bill? Yeah. This is Dennis in Indiana. Yeah. Uh, you know me. Uh, I've got the Cremation Act, Indiana Code here. Uh-huh. And in Indiana, you can't be cremated until 48 hours after the death. How about that? Sooner. Yeah, but they did it immediately, didn't they? It, it says, except when waived in writing by city or county health officer. Yeah, and why would they do that? <laughs> well, there's a paper trail there to maybe follow. Yep. I just uh, found that out from a mortician the other day, so I thought I'd uh, check out the facts and then give you a call. Great. Thank Take you. Care. Thank you. Thanks for calling. Bye-bye. See you, folks. 520-333-4578 is the number. According to the federal government, uh, Timothy McVay was cremated, you know, Within 12 hours of being executed. Good evening. You're on the air. Good evening, Bill. Stephen Main. Hi. Um, you heard of a Pam Shuffert? Yeah, she's full of crap. Okay. Wanted to check on it because I got an email this morning saying that she's been over in the block and talking to these. She's full of crap. Stormtroopers. Full right. of crap. She's what well, she's what you call a disinformation agent. Uh, you know, just spouting bullshit everywhere. I get them too. She sends them to me too. It's all bullshit. Uh, really. <laughs> Believe it or not, it's true. 520-333-4578 is the number. And uh, you know the topic? Good evening. You're on the air. Yes, good evening, Bill. How are you this evening? Good. Uh, I had read uh, on the Internet today uh, a couple of things about Osama bin Laden, too, um, uh, with regards to the CNN reporter uh, getting into uh, his uh, ultra-secret lair, uh, whatever the hell it is, you know. And I couldn't help thinking the same thing. Must be on the moon, huh? Yeah, well, yeah, you know. Oh, well, it's how this reporter how, uh, gets it, you know? <laughs> it's amazing how you have all the American intelligence agencies, British intelligence agencies. Everybody's looking for this guy, and all of a sudden, you know, some clown comes in with a camera, and oh, now he's on TV. Oh, here he is. Let me tell you something. If he's an enemy of Israel and the Mossad can't find him, then this thing is the biggest joke that you ever heard of in your life. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, I was actually trying to explain to some friends this weekend, uh, you know, about how the, Osama bin Laden is just the next, I, I even said he was the next Saddam Hussein. Yeah, he's the next you know, boogeyman. He's some dark-skinned guy, and everybody can go, ooh, we hate dark-skinned people, you know, and, and, and hide behind this guy. And uh, I actually think uh, if anything does happen, which is very unlikely, it will. But No, that's, that's not week, true. It, it is very likely that it will. Well, I mean in the next two weeks. Uh, if anything does happen, what about the 4th of July? It's the 225th uh, anniversary of the Declaration of Independence. Yeah, what about it? You know? That's a, that's a good time for it to happen. Yeah, well, I, I certainly hope not. But uh, I, hope, I hope not, too, but I'm telling you right now, as I told you before, I, I'm telling you that something's going to happen. If it doesn't happen in the next two or three weeks, something eventually, something terrible is going to happen in this country, uh, and it's going to be a terrorist attack. And we're going to know who did it. And, and, and we're going to watch CNN and whatever, and they're going to go, oh, 
Yeah, and, it, and it's going to be big enough that martial law could be declared and, and it could start the whole thing. Well, thank you for uh, getting getting the truth out, and you have a good evening, sir. You're welcome. Thanks for calling. Bye. 520 is the number. Good evening. You're on the air. Um, hello. This is uh, Marie from Colorado, and you had posed a question in your program, Why Are People So Dumb? Yeah. When I was in 11th grade, my American history class, Mrs. Sheldon was my teacher, and this was 1971. And so, yes, I am approaching 50. And she told us, she says, whenever you read the newspaper or you hear anything in the news, you ask yourself two questions. The first question is, who stands to make the money from what happened, and who stands to make the power from what happened? And she says, and if you haven't answered your question in reading that article or listening to the newscast, then you're not being told the truth. And the problem is, is that teachers don't teach like that any longer. Well, and I, my kids never learned that in their class. And um, I'm the one who told them, hey, kids, listen to this. Listen to what Mom says. My, Mrs. Shelton told me this. And that's one of the reasons why people are so dumb is because they don't analyze and don't instinctively think, hmm, this and this do not add up. Well, you're right. You're absolutely correct. Mm -hmm. And Mrs. Shelton, oh, you're probably in your 70s by now, so uh, anyway, here's to you. And God bless you, Mr. Cooper, for your program. And will you be re uh, broadcasting this when you're taking that week? Uh, that's up to WBCQ. They're going to determine what they broadcast. If you have favorite programs that you want to hear again, call them and ask them to play them. Okay, we will. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. You're welcome. 520-333-4578 is the number. Um, good evening. You're on the air. Hello. Good evening, Bill. Yes. Hey, this is David. Uh, checking in from Rhode Island. Uh-huh. And uh, I, I want to uh, comment on your discussion about when they immediately after this uh, mirror building blew up, in a short time after, they brought the building down and destroyed all the evidence. Yeah. And, and it wasn't brought down with the kind of bomb that allegedly Timmy McVeigh popped in front of the building. No, it was brought down with safe charges on the columns, just exactly like what happened when it was brought down first, <laughs> when, when half of it was brought down. And it's, it, it's just disgusting the way the average citizenry looks at this whole issue. And I'm telling you that most of the calls they call when the time comes, they're gonna they're, they're gonna turn they're gonna they're, they're gonna turn trade a bill. Sure they will. So I I don't you know I'm, most, I'm, most most people will, but there's an infrastructure of dedicated patriots in this country who will not. And, no, and I and I, uh, and I agree and, with you with that, and uh, I have made my pledge and I continue to make it. When I, I don't care what it is, who it is, when you cross from the line, it's lock and load. Yep. And, and and it's going to cost somebody. Yeah, you better believe it's not it. getting done for free anymore. That's right. So if they want to, you know, waste uh, ten people on some kind of a, you know, a, 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 an ATF sweep, they better have the equal amount taken out with them. Well, I I don't I don't. Uh, and I and I know that that's your, that's your attitude. I, I hope you use this week, this time that you're going to spend, uh, you know, at your place, uh, you know, also for to recharge your batteries. Oh, yeah, that's that's one of the purposes. Oh, uh, good. Of course. Well, I'm glad to hear that, and God bless you. Thank you. Good night. Yeah, because I am tired. I've, I've been working for so many years so hard, uh, and uh, rarely, if ever, even take one day off to myself. And so, uh, yeah, part of this is going to be uh, sort of relaxing for me. Good evening, you're on the air. Uh, yes, hi, uh, William. Uh, there was an article in the New York Times about Daniel Spiegelman, who supplied the uh, weapons for the Oklahoma bombing. Well, he's, he's, what, he, what he did um, was he was part of a, of a group of so-called Aryan uh, uh, Resistance Army uh, that, uh, that was robbing banks and things and providing funding uh, for the Alfred P. Muir Federal Building bombing. And part of what he did was he went to an American university and stole uh, historical, famous uh, historical documents and took them to Europe to sell them. He's Jewish. Right. The, the article was December 30th, 1995, page uh -huh. 9 in the New York Times. Uh, uh, let, let me ask you, where is he today? What is the latest on him? Uh, well, I, I don't know. He sort of disappeared after they discovered that the lawyer who defended him when he was convicted in court 
of stealing these documents and trying to sell them uh, was not a lawyer at all. And so uh, I, I believe that they that they uh, um, overthrew his conviction because of that. He, he didn't have a proper defense and uh, sealed the records and he disappeared. Okay, I saw it on your internet site where he was convicted, but apparently he, he never went to prison at all, I guess. Not that I'm aware of. Yeah, they just let him go. It's probably the Israeli Mossad, I think. I think he's, I think, I think he's with... Well, I think this was a combination of the of the CIA, the FBI, the Israeli Mossad, uh, the BATF, and uh, several other uh, of the German intelligence for sure, because uh, Andreas Strassmeyer was a part of this. He's another Jewish uh, man who was a member of the German intelligence uh, structure, um, who who uh, was instrumental in planning the whole thing. Right. Well, our government may as well be the Mossad. And, you know, uh, Capitol Hill is Israeli yeah. occupied territory. And, what, what, uh, what you have what you have to understand is this is not leading toward an Israel of the world. It's leading toward a a Marxist socialist utopian, or they believe it's utopian. It's going to be like the old Soviet Union world government. Um, whenever, yes, and whenever the media covers something up real well like this, the way they let Spiegelman go like that. Uh, you, you know it's the Jews who are behind it. No, we don't know it's the Jews behind it, and, and I've never said that, and, and neither should you. Uh, George Bush is certainly not a Jew, but he's a part of it. Right, he works for them. Yeah, they put him in office. No, and it's not that he works for them. You don't understand the structure of the organization that is actually bringing apart world government. The reason that they're able to recruit so many Jewish people to be a part of this is the Jews have never allowed themselves to assimilate as citizens, really, of any country. They're always Jewish. They always separate themselves. They always look forward to next year in Jerusalem. They believe themselves to be a part of a world, and they want to bring about a world government. So they're, they're sympathetic to this whole one-world government ideal. But the people at the heart and soul of all of this, and there are a lot of Jewish people involved, are what's called the Illuminati. But well, none, of, none of them are Jews. None of them are Catholic. Not a single one of them are what you would call Protestant or Buddhist or anything else. They believe that man is God. They believe in the humanist religion. They pretend to be Jews. They pretend to be Catholics. They pretend to be Protestants. They infiltrate religions and organizations and governments. They take over and destroy from within. Yeah, the, the problem that we're faced with here, though, if you look at the executive news directors at all three television networks, uh, then including uh, CNN now, which belongs to Jerry Levin of Time Warner, uh, you look at the head of the New York Times, Salzberger, you're, you're, uh, Catherine you're, you're, you're going off on a tangent here, and you're wrong. They're not Jews. Jew is a religion, not a race. Right, and I agree. But, but, but you're not listening to me. Those right. people who are involved in bringing about one world government, do not believe in any religion. In fact, their goal is to destroy all existing religions, including the Jewish religion. Well, the definition of a Jew is a difficult thing. Some people think it's part race, some people think it's part religion. Excuse me, excuse me. Jew is not a race. It is a religion, always has been. If Jew was a race, every Muslim and every member or follower of the Prophet Muhammad who are Semites would also be Jews, and they're not. Oh, okay, you, sir, are, you, sir, are uneducated. Okay, okay, I, I agree. I, let's say that I agree with your definition of a Jew. The problem is they're you have, running you all have, of our... You have no choice. Okay, the problem <laughs> is they're running all of our mass media, and they're killing this country. They're not... They're the ones... well, well, you're wrong again. They're not running all of our mass media. Hollywood. Oh, okay, you're publishing. Excuse me. Those are all... Cor aren't they corporations? Are they NDC? That's, excuse, that's excuse, corporations. Excuse, excuse me. Aren't they all corporations? It's Jewish corporations. Excuse me, aren't they all corporations? Furthermore, Jewish Answer corporations. Answer my question, you dumb jerk. Are they corporations or not? Yes, but they're If they're corporations and all you Aryans wanted to gain control, all you have to do is buy the stock and take over the country. Good night, you stupid jerk. God, I'm so tired of stupid dummies. If you want to control Hollywood, buy the stock, dummy, and take over. Whoever owns the stock chooses the board of directors, chooses who runs the corporations, chooses what movies they make, chooses what goes on television. 
You don't even understand your own system. If the Jews own it, it's because you elected not to participate and you gave it to them. And let me ask you this. Who sold it to them in the first place? How'd they gain control of everything if what you're saying is true? Hmm? I'm just so tired of this stupidity. You want to blame somebody? Blame yourself. You see, you could all own whatever you want to own. Buy the stock. Take over. Fire the board of directors. Appoint your own board of directors. You can own it. Good night. God bless each and every single one of you. Good night, Annie Poo and Allison. I love you. Don't mistake our revelation of some of the plotters in the Oklahoma City bombing. No and our reporting of the disclosure of a Jewish no underground in this country that is absolutely a threat to the national security as confirming your misguided beliefs that Jews control this country. They don't. We do. We do. Do you understand that? If you don't, you better get a handle on it and you better learn it real quick. If they control it, it's because you gave it to them. mission, folks. My mission is freedom for all people, of all races, all religions, and all points of ancestral origin. I'm not here to validate your own particular beliefs about your racial superiority or anything else. And I don't care who you are. Jew, white, Native American, doesn't make any difference to me. You're all full of crap. I believe in one race, and that's the human race. I know what's going on. I've studied it for so many years. Most of you haven't even got the slightest clue and probably never will. 